Hello and welcome to the Proyaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 53, Numbers. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. Now, welcome to the 53rd week of 2013 and the 53rd episode of the Proyaku Report. The report has, for the most part, been all about numbers all year long. So, for the final report, I'd like to be looking at numbers, jersey numbers to be specific. You see, as I go through entering new contracts, I'm also seeing notifications of teams changing player uniform numbers. And every now and then I see a number go from 16 to, say, 67. And the first thing that comes to mind is, this guy doesn't have much of a future left. Somebody is not really thinking of him anymore as a high prospect. So while I can do this intuitively, I'd like to know if there are any numbers to back this uh, idea up. So let's take a look at some. Okay, well, before we can get started, the first thing that I had to do was create a TSV file, that is tab-separated value, like comma-separated value, a file of all of the players' jersey numbers, the number of years that they played, the salary for any given year and jersey number, and a flag to tell whether or not the player was a foreign player. Now, with regard to Sketo, I'd like to point you to a related article by Patrick Newman called The First Year Foreign Player Pay Scale over at npbtracker.com. This is a very good article, and it really does explain why it is that uh, numbers like this will be thrown off for first-year foreign players, because the year is important in the study that I'm about to conduct. Now, also, I'd like to note that the data in this report is over the time span of 2009 to 2013. I know that there are some players in this data set missing. Um, a lot of players would sign late, and their uh, contract negotiations never really mentioned in the newspapers. You know, these are tend to be minor players. So that there are a few players missing out of over 4,000 records, I think uh, we got it covered. And I would also like to note that the raw TSV file that I created is going to be available as a link in the show notes on both the Google Plus Pro Yaku community and at JapaneseBaseball.com in my Bayside West Yokohama blog, along with this video. Now, let's head on over to the IPython notebook and see what we get. Okay, a lot of this first stuff is importing various libraries, then reading in the backnumbers.tsv file, and I call the describe function on the data. The summary tells us that there are 4,158 records. The average number of years played is almost six and a half years, with an average salary of around 4,000 mon, or 40 million yen and that the number of foreigners averages to around 1% of the total number of players. A quarter of the players have played for three years or less, while another quarter have played for nine years or more. Also, a quarter have earned 800 mon, or 8 million yen or less per year, with the higher quarter earning over the mean of 4,000 mon or 40 million yen. The maximum number of years played is 29, Kimiyasu Kudo, and the highest salary is 6 Oku, or 600 million yen, Lee Son a couple years ago. Okay, let's take a quick look at the popularity of various numbers. Now, I sorted these numbers by the number of foreigners with a given number. The reason uniform numbers have a leading in, by the way, is so that numbers like 00, zero don't get merged with 0. But uh, that's just a bookkeeping technique. Nonetheless, 
an overwhelming number of foreign players appear to get the number 42. Now, while some may come to the conclusion that this is in honor of Jackie Robinson, and there may be some truth to that, it actually revolves around superstition. The number 42 can be pronounced shini, which is the command die. I expected to see more foreigners in the 40s, as 4 itself is overall kind of considered an unlucky number, but it seems that they fall into a large range of random numbers, mostly over 50. That's a bit of a surprise, and I've been entering jersey numbers into databases since 1995. So let's tweak this and order by Japanese players. Now my theory is that smaller numbers, that is numbers less than 40, are more desirable, and therefore there should be more players with them. However, 39 and 48 are at the top of the most frequent jersey numbers in use, and I can't think of a single player who wears one of those numbers off the top of my head. Of the numbers in the top 10, it seems to me that 22, 33, then 30 and 28 would be the most sought after in that order. And that's not the order they appear in. Are teams keeping these numbers along with ace numbers, 16 and 18 reserved? Let's display the whole table here. And we'll just scan down a little bit. Hmm. While numbers in the 70s and 90s are grouped toward the bottom, there are a lot of players scattered all across the spectrum. I'm starting to think that a lot of farmhands get high numbers consistently, and teams kind of free up the lower numbers in hopes of drawing in new draft picks and perhaps free agents in the following years. Hmm... Let's see if average salaries for numbers gives us any more insight than this. Oh, wow, this is a big table. Uh, let's pull this table over into numbers, where we can manipulate it a little nicer. Okay, now I've arranged these a bit so that pitchers come first, then catchers, infielders, and outfielders. Also, single-digit jersey numbers were all brought up to the top. Finally, I highlighted the foreigner columns in yellow to kind of differentiate them. So, what stands out? Well, there are no Japanese pitchers in numbers 2 through 10, and numbers 11 through 22 are almost exclusively pitchers. Scrolling down, there are very few players with jersey numbers in the 70s and 80s. These are generally reserved for coaching staff, so it's not surprising to one who's been watching uniform numbers for a while. Hmm. Also, numbers 47 and up seem to have much lower average salaries for Japanese. As I said, foreigners don't tend to follow the trends. With a few exceptions, such as 52, numbers ending in zero, and double numbers like 55 and 99. But the lower average salaries in pitching numbers kind of surprises me. Are these numbers always given to rookies out of high school? Let's take a look at average salaries for number of years in the NPB. And once again, this is a little daunting to read, so let's take a look at it in numbers. Okay, let's go back to the 11 to 22 range for jersey numbers. Ace numbers like 18 has an average 
surpassing Ichioku, or a hundred million yen, starting at the fifth year, number 11 in the sixth year, and number 16 in the seventh year. Now, these are the figures over a five-year time span, from 2009 to 2013. So it's not necessarily tracking a single player through his entire career. I think that this is best exemplified by Kudo's 29th NPB season with the number 55. Before that, he wore the number 47, but that was in 2009, the first year of the study, so he does not have a salary tracing back any farther than this here in this report. So, there does appear to be some evidence that many younger players are getting highly desired low numbers, especially the sweet zone in the teens and low 20s for pitchers. That may be the major reason behind the lower salaries for an ace pitcher than I had expected. And seeing a third-year player reassigned a number in the 60s for a number in the teens may be the mechanism that keeps the salaries for such ace numbers low. And considering how few veterans have numbers greater than 55, it should be something for that player to worry about. And with that, I submit to you this final Pro Yaku report. It's been enjoyable and educational putting together a video report every week this year. But I would like to try to expand my creativity in other outlets for 2014. So I'm afraid that the Pro Yaku report will be coming to an end. Of course, you will still be seeing me in the Pro Yaku community on Google Plus and on JapaneseBaseball.com, which is well overdue for a full overhaul. So thank you for joining me on this journey, and until we meet again, take care.